Reading salutations. This is notorious. Yeah, I realized a bit bad fox to read you a poem. This one is entitled The Capture of the Wind. It was inspired by did I mean it? It is a long bit, so I do apologize if it does take me longer to get this done than normal. And by that, I mean you may see a few breaks here and there, and that will be originally sane and gone. But, one thing the further say I do, there's the image there. Let's break some eardrums. <clears throat> As I looked down upon her, victory at last in my grasp, I had to ask her, what do you say, she who mocked captivity, who had so boastfully slain to the high heavens and the darkest depths of the sea, that there was no one who could confine your spirit, and that you would always be free? I taunted as I leaned further, wishing to hear her disgruntled sneer of my adversary, yet I heard nothing from the soul that fluttered just out of my reach. She with those brilliant eyes that shimmered like the starlight glimmered with the most adored and treasured page of my glorious legacy. But as she turned to me as if she was ready to speak, nothing came to grace my ears that I could indulge in. No feeble dribble or protest spewed from her beak. Speak, foul rogue, spit your hatred at she who has clipped your wings. Where do you plan to flee now? Tell me, you wretched squab, where is your bravado, your moxie, where is your slanderous tongue that will be torn from your beak in less than a week from today? I kicked the stockade that held her fast to the great earth, but in the end, still nothing, till she looked at me with a pain-filled eyes and spoke her mind. I pity you. Such an elegant and bewitching creature bound to the belief that there is only one of me. Tell me, do you truly believe that my death will even mean anything? She asked so calmly as if she knew for a fact that my torturous threats were as empty as the streets that will soon be displayed with her dying moments. You understand that you will never be rid of me. Or the ideals that ripples off my plumage, like the waters that kiss Mother Sky. She then looked away to the ocean that she so loved, and for a moment my glance followed, looking towards the open sea. Yet her voice brought me back to the painful reality that she was forcing me to accept. Do you truly think that my life will end just because you wish it? I could form no answer for my voice was stripped from me as if she had stolen it like she had stolen so many things that I hoped would forever be mine. No, my beloved rival, the one creature that I cherish even more than my freedom, the spirit of the wind is as free as my own dazzling soul, for no cage can force an end to her song, no bottle can hold in her echoing cry for many to join her, whether it be sea or sky. She then grew silent and turned away from me, as if to hide her shame from me, as if I was disappointed in her ability to remain one step ahead, one or two more inches from my grasp. In one fell swoop, she stole it all from me, my voice, my ego, my desire I had to watch her hang and swing like the chapel bells that would toll for the new day. Yet at the same time, this bird reminded me of how it felt flying, the traversing the jet streams and flowing tide, how I felt with nothing but mother sky before me and sister sea below, but more importantly, how I felt flying not just against her, but with her. Why? I spoke silently, trying not to look her in the eyes, afraid that I would lose more than I already had to this raven cloth of the parrot or the voice of a phoenix. I could only hope that she didn't register my words, but as she turned to look at me, she asked me to repeat what I said. Why? Why must you let me have this one moment? Why must you steal everything from me? I questioned, but before she could speak, I found myself kissing her for no other reason but to silence her and give me a moment to think, to just gather my feelings, to separate what I knew was true and what I believed. 
Upon release, I walked away knowing what I left behind, but also knowing what I had gained. Upon release, I knew that they would be the second too late, and she would be gone. Yes, free once more to explore Mother's sky to her heart's content. But upon release, I would be free to enjoy the splendors of our game. My dearest and most beloved rival, I hope you keep to your word, for I will not stand my heart being stolen by a peahead who promised me the heavens and can only give me the salt of the sea. I listened as the wood fell to the cobble and smiled, leaving her behind. Yet I said one last thing as I looked back out of the corner of my eye. You know that you are wrong, dear Captain, for there is only one of you, and that one is the only one who I will call my beloved. I finished feeling the ceiling that had lifted off my soul as I was finally able to embrace and let go of the undesired hatred and bitterness towards a woman that I had adored. Her lasting words drew chimed clearly in my heart, but as she blew me a kiss, I swiftly turned my saber and cut through the expression of affection and only said, next time we meet, I want to feel not just your lips, but your body against mine. Holy shit, I did it! That wasn't bad at all. I Yay for me! Y'all probably can't hear a damn thing I said during that entire poem. I tried my best. I did. I tried my best. I tried to voice act it and everything. So, today, Mina, I do hope you would do, do like this part at this poem because this is that day that you've been, you know, inspiring. So, deuces, I'm out, and I'll even give this one. Whatever.